Rest in peace, Big L. That the dopest, was the one of the dopest. Yes. Big L was who put Jay Z on. Yeah, of course. Takeoff's death wasn't nothing but a corporate hostile takeover using his life. It appears Jay-Z might have more pressing concerns than just being spotted on Diddy's private takes. Jaguar Wright has resurfaced once again, and this time she's divulging some serious allegations. She's claiming that Jay-Z has supposedly sacrificed several rappers to advance in his career. Industry insiders like Jaguar and Cat Williams have long hinted at the idea that certain higher-ups profit from the untimely and senseless demise of young rappers. Despite being dismissed as crazy in the past, Jaguar Wright now asserts that she has undeniable evidence to support her claims. Jaguar claims to possess evidence implicating Jay-Z in orchestrating and profiting from the deaths of rappers such as Takeoff, Big L, Nipsey Hussle, and Pipsy. She paints a disturbing picture of a web of conspiracies, deals, and significant financial transactions. But are these claims grounded in truth? Is Jay-Z truly involved in manipulating events to eliminate perceived threats to his career? Jaguar has dedicated much of her recent years to exposing rappers and music executives who allegedly sacrifice others for their own advancement. At the forefront of her accusations stands Jay-Z. According to Jaguar, Jay-Z surpasses even Diddy in malevolence. She asserts that his actions extend beyond the mistreatment of women and into the realm of orchestrating tragic outcomes for those he views as obstacles to his success. The recurring theme of such tragedies raises questions about the validity of these claims. Is it merely a coincidence? Or is there substance to the notion that Jay-Z consistently benefits from such circumstances? Jaguar's persistent allegations against Jay-Z suggest a deeply troubling narrative of manipulation and exploitation within the music industry. In a recent interview with Real Life Productions, Jaguar Wright didn't shy away from discussing what she perceives as a conspiracy surrounding the untimely demise of Takeoff who tragically passed away in 20,122. According to Jaguar, Takeoff's passing was not merely a random event, but rather part of a calculated scheme orchestrated by Jay-Z and Rock Nation. She alleges that Jay-Z is willing to go to extreme lengths, including eliminating other artists who pose a threat to his own or his wife's career. Through her candid revelations, Jaguar paints a troubling picture of power dynamics within the music industry, suggesting that certain individuals are not above resorting to drastic measures to maintain their dominance. According to Jaguar, Megan finds herself deeply entangled in this web, and it relates to her conflict with her former label, 1501 Certified Entertainment, and its CEO, Jay Prince. Takeoff's tragic death continues to resonate within the hip-hop community, particularly among Migos fans, due to its senseless nature. Takeoff and his bandmate, Uncle Kwa, had been at a private gathering that concluded around 1 o'clock a.m. They opted to linger and socialize with acquaintances from the party, unaware that this choice would have fatal consequences. Reports from TMZ indicate that around 2.30 a.m. on that night, law enforcement received a distress call regarding a shooting incident at a Bowling Houston establishment named 810 Billiards. Remarkably, Takeoff was not directly involved in the events leading up to the shooting. TMZ's account suggests that Takeoff and Quavo were engaged in a game of dice when an altercation erupted involving Quavo and some individuals, escalating to the point where gunfire erupted, tragically striking Takeoff. Despite Quavo and others present calling for assistance, Takeoff was pronounced dead on arrival, DOA. Two additional individuals sustained injuries and were transported to the hospital. In the aftermath, many fans directed blame towards Quavo, perceiving his actions as irresponsible for associating with such company. Earlier that evening,
Quavo had shared a video of himself cruising around town with Jazz Prince, the son of Jay Prince, CEO of Houston-based record label Rap A Lot Records. Jay Prince holds significant influence in the rap music industry, often referred to as one of its godfathers and even dubbing himself the King of Houston. His son, Jazz Prince, is also an influential figure in the rap scene. Together, they played a pivotal role in introducing Drake to Lil Wayne and facilitating. In 2009, Jay Prince played a pivotal role in Drake landing a contract with Young Money Entertainment. Jazz Prince, his son, is renowned not only for his involvement in the music industry, but also for his streetwear brand, Mob Ties. There's talk on the street alleging that Jay Prince offers protection to high-profile rappers when they're in Houston. However, rumors suggest that this protection comes at a steep price, with artists allegedly being overcharged for security services. Furthermore, there are whispers about dice games organized by Jay Prince and his son Jazz, where artists have reportedly been ambushed, robbed, and sometimes even met unfortunate ends. Sadly, Takeoff isn't the first rapper to lose their life after attending one of these games. Just two months prior to Takeoff's passing, Chicago's Duke the Jeweler was fatally shot after winning $100,000 in a dice game with J. Prince Jr. fans directed criticism towards Quavo after Takeoff's death. Feeling that he should have exercised better judgment than to associate with individuals like J. Prince Jr., even more unsettling are the rumors that surface suggesting takeoff was specifically targeted for sacrifice. Many individuals found it suspicious that he was taken out on Halloween, viewing it as more than just a mere coincidence. Adding to the entry is the timing of the release of the music video for Thea Messi, dropped the day before the tragic incident. The video contained disturbing imagery that eerily seemed to foreshadow the events that transpired. In one scene, a group is depicted gambling and quarreling over cards, while Quavo casually holds a firearm nearby, seemingly scrutinizing a Migos contract. Meanwhile, Takeoff stands next to a painting of the Grim Reaper adorned with the letters Rip P. However, what's even more sinister about this narrative is the apparent effort to sweep Takeoff's death under the rug. Allegedly, powerful figures are working behind the scenes. In December 2022, police arrested Patrick Xavier Clark under suspicion of firing the shots that resulted in Takeoff's death. By May 2023, a grand jury indicted Clark in connection with the incident. Welcome to Barnes and No! Where did it go? posted bail amounting to $1 million and was subsequently released on house arrest. By November 2023, reports surfaced indicating that Clark was no longer subject to house arrest or required to wear a GPS monitor. Instead, he was only restricted by a curfew from 7 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock a.m. court documents revealed further stipulations, including prohibitions on contacting witnesses victims, and family members of Takeoff. Additionally, Clark was barred from communicating with J. Prince, J. Prince Chair, and their known associate Shecker Stevenson. Clark's attorney asserted that her client did not fire the shots that struck Takeoff, citing video evidence and ballistic analysis to support their claim. Now fans seem to believe her one said Jack has been consistent with her stories for years, even before social media. I'm just glad she's still here to continue telling the truth. Another one said it's crazy that not one person she speaks of ever comes forward, saying she's lying or trying to sue her that. Means she's telling the truth, but what do y'all think about Jay-Z's seeming connection with all these different rappers' deaths? Is there something we're missing? Or is this just a huge conspiracy comment down below? And we'll see you in the next video.